welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, the madman behind Black Oath Entertainment. A man who has mo been on the show multiple times, now with now with his fourth visit into the temple with Path of the Aram Theer, the one and only Alex T. How are you doing today, man? Hey, Mildred. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me again. Doing great. Thank you for coming on and braving time zone hell to pay a visit to my temple. Uh, it's, it's not a problem. It's, it's like 7 p.m. here, so perfectly reasonable time. So, I guess uh, I guess I'll start with where where did the original idea to do Aram Theer come come along? Was this something that was in the back of your mind for a while, or what? Or was the origin a bit more recent? Well, I um, started working on, on Path of the Aram Theer right after I finished Sacrifice. So in a way, it's really the the continuation, at least uh, rule set wise. It's also a D twenty system, mm -hmm. um, but that's where the similarities end because the tone and and most of the core mechanics are uh, deviate quite a lot from sacrifice, and they are mostly influenced by, as it it's usually the case with me. I was really binging and I was really into book series called Cradle, which is um, what they call a progression fantasy. Mm -hmm. And it, it's has a, it, it, the setting is very xian xia and with a lot of uh, typical Chinese cultivation stuff and a lot of it. It's an extremely fun book series. It's among my all-time favorites, really. I cannot recommend it enough. So of course I thought, uh, okay, I I need to make a game in this, in this style. So, so that's how Path of the Iron Theory came to yeah. exist. It was just taking the the basic rules that's from, from Sacrifice and giving it a progression fantasy touch. Mm -hmm. Now, progression fantasy is obviously right on the right on the cover. And right on the yeah. first few wor words of the Kickstarter page. So I think this is as good a time as any to go into what exactly progression fantasy is. Yeah, that's a question I'm getting asked a lot lately, which makes sense. No, as a term, it's relatively new, but the idea of progression fantasy has existed for quite a few decades now. I, I dare to say... Um, at least to my knowledge, it's probably uh, the work of uh, Akira Toriyama, who, as we know, he just recently passed away. Dragon Ball, I would say, was, if it's not the first, it's among the first instances of uh, of what we can call progression fantasy. Because it's, it's a style of fantasy which focuses on characters becoming more and more powerful. And, and learning new skills, new abilities, so they can tackle larger challenges. And then they, for, they are forced to... I mean, it's a constant um, improvement of the character. And that's a, something that I always loved in and, 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 and all sorts of stories. And one of the main reasons I play RPGs. I, If an RPG doesn't have a really deep and detailed character progression system, I get bored very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So so uh, the idea behind progression fantasy is telling the story, like in said, like I said in, in Dragon Ball or most of the shonen manga you have nowadays, Naruto or Bleach, all these kind of things. All those are perfect examples of progression fantasy. And and that's exactly what uh, Path of the Arm Theory is, is about, is you have the, your character, who thought was at the peak of of the of his power in his small little island, and then they discover that there is, there's this whole new uh, enormous continent uh, where they are actually at the bottom of the of the ladder. So it's your character just traveling, exploring, and learning new 
new ways of becoming more powerful. Mm -hmm. Now, there there are a few I, there are a few um, concepts that I was wondering if they played an influence, especially with the paths setup that you have. One of the big ones is the Lone Wolf series of game books. It was that an influence at all, or is that just a coincidence on my end? And no, I can't say it was an influence at all, but now I'm very curious to think why why you think it was, because I, I of course I I loved the the books when I was growing up. It was probably the closest thing to role playing I did when I was like ten or whatever. But no, I can't say they have absolutely any influence in, in Path of the Iron yeah. Fear. So wh why did why did you think it does? That's um. very interesting. I suppose part of it had to do with the path system that you have that you have with Aram Thier. The uh, the other is just the t the titular Aram Thier and the framing device that you have with them. It ended up reminding me a lot of the Kai Lords in Lone Wolf, especially since yeah, no. they it it's not a it's not a one to one, but they have their own version of that concept of a path system within the books and so yeah yeah now that now that you mention it i i could see a little bit of of that same um, dna i suppose maybe it, maybe it was unconscious but yeah interesting uh, and with now with that in with that in mind even though this is using a D, even though this is using a d20 system much like what happened with with sacrifice, um, it's get, I get the feeling that it's one of those things where it isn't exactly a one a one to one. Um, in ter in terms of the f fact that you can't you can't um play you can't play a character that you might have been played in a more ubiquitous um d twenty system the same way in this. Yeah, definitely it it wouldn't work very well because the way characters are built in, in Path of the Iron Third for starters is a classless system. Mm -hmm. And and there are, are no races. I mean everybody's a, it's just a human. Hmm. And it it all revolves around the path you you choose when you create your character. Which I guess you could say it's your class, but not really because they are so wide. They just provide a common theme and flavor to to the kind of abilities you're going to use. And so you have, a, I think it was ten or twelve starting paths, mm -hmm. and things like uh, controlling blood or or air attacks or water, and I don't know this this kind of more elemental or. Are a bit more defined by by the the type of techniques you can you can expect to to have in that path. But like I said, they are relatively open because all techniques are divided into a few categories, and all and all those categories exist in all paths. So even though you you could take a path of blood, you could make it completely aggressive, or you could make it a healer. So it depends on the on on the techniques you, which by the way they are called weshan in the game. Uh, it depends on which uh, weshan you learn during your your progression. So it uh, it is a d20 system. It it's it traditional. I mean, you roll d20, add the attribute or scale modifier, and it, it, you equal or surpass the target number, the DC. Then you you have a success. Uh, so in that sense, you could, for example, take any enemy from, uh, especially uh, second edition of, of of Dungeons and Dragons. I really based a lot of the numbers on on that edition. So you could relatively safely take uh, any random enemy from one of those books and and use it in Path of the Iron Fear. The same goes for damage values or basic mechanics. I don't know for traps or. So the core core elements are there, and and that makes it relatively compatible with any other retro clone or or system derived from classic D and D. 
that yeah, the power. I mean, the characters in Path of the Iron Fear are a little bit more powerful than your usual warrior or thief, and in in other retro clones, which um, because of because that's just the nature of of the game. It's in that sense, it will be closer to to what you would expect in 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 what I was saying in in, in Nima style of 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 stories. Uh, you you will be flinging. Uh, fireballs and and th throwing a thousand uh, fists against your opponent very very easily. So it's it's that very over the top action and and you could even almost say that all characters are, are essentially mages at some point. Mm -hmm. And I su I suppose I suppose that's I suppose some people are going to read about that because of. Apparently, if we're doing fantasy, we have to do the we have to do the bottom the bottom rung of jumped up pe jumped up peasants in a fantasy Vietnam in order for it to be true fa fantasy or something. I'm <laughs> I'm jo I'm joking, of course, but there is that mindset am among s among certain fo among certain folk who want to argue tradition, and I will constantly make fun of it because it, it's an but get but getting on the path part of things uh there's a there's a few uh, there's a few recurring aspects that i wa that i wanted to tackle um one of the, one of them is it look it looks like each one has a st a stance a buy in kind of ability and abilities that you get as you advance along that path Yeah, correct. So, well, before we tackle that, uh, about your comment about the <laughs> fantasy not being uh, being limited to being a bunch of peasants, I, I must say that's actually my preferred uh, style of, of of playing. And I mean, I, I tend to prefer low fantasy settings and all that, but um, I just I don't know. I, I felt the necessity to to do something a bit different with. Path of the Iron Theory, and even though it still has that kind of uh, not not really medieval, the setting is closer to pre-medieval or more Celtic mm -hmm. Viking influence, and at least aesthetically, and a lot of the enemies and yeah. organizations. I mean, you even have uh, druids, so mm -hmm. that's a little bit of that uh, Celtic uh, or European pre-medieval setting, or even pre-Roman. Um. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. I've got. I. I. I like low fantasy as much as the next guy. I just. Um. I just like. I just like taking the piss out of people who, have, who have romant. Who have over romanticized it. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, it's silly to, to stick to so just one thing. I mean, just you can have fun playing any style of fantasy and just let people do whatever they want mm. and and it's silly when people come to piss on on what others find fun or and trying to standardize things i just it's it's pointless to try to deal with that sort of people it's just do your thing let people do their own thing and everybody can have fun the, the way they want and well, and going back to your question about the techniques and all that. So yeah, each path has a predefined set of uh, weshan that you can learn as you progress and all that. But the cool thing and and what I, I'm most proud of in the game is that um, you can uh, techniques from other opponents that you come across, which is essentially the, the core mechanic and core goal, goal of the game you just uh, travel around maybe sol solving quests helping people and all that usual stuff mm -hmm. but while you're doing so you're going to find opponents that have techniques which you don't have and when you defeat them there's a chance that you can steal those techniques and incorporate them into your own path so they will of course adapt to your own uh, specific path because if you steal a, a water technique and maybe it's not compatible with your blades path uh, 
but most of the times you can twist it in a way that it, it will be. So most of the techniques you're going to come across, you can more or less adapt them. It's not a 100%, mm -hmm. but most of the techniques are kind of uh, um, uh, path uh, neutral, so you can adapt them to your path. And, and that's the fun of the of the game. And that way you just go collecting and making your own your your own uh, path. <laughs> Uh, you, there's a limit to the number of active techniques you can you can have. Of course, you can't end up with 200 because the game has dozens and dozens of of techniques. So uh, you have to pick and choose, of course, until you have really the eight techniques that you want to 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 become your core uh, gameplay experience. Mm -hmm. The and when it that whole idea of ad of adapting techniques that you experience is definitely within the within the within the genre within the fantasy that this is trying to go for and the parallel that immediately came to mind hearing that is the light is the lightning redirect in avatar like I Iro had developed that technique after observing waterbenders and obvi obviously, there's mm -hmm. no water involved with that technique, but the, prin but that principle of redirecting energy is still the same. Um, if I'm being honest, I cannot remember. I I watched Avatar, of course, and I loved it, but it was I watched it as it was being released, so it was very long. I'm going. I'm not the person who who rewatches things, so. Um, but it's funny now that you mention Avatar. Yeah, actually, I could see a lot of similarity, similarities between Path of the Iron Theory and, and Avatar. Yeah. Um, because it's yeah, the way the paths, the different elements work and all that. Instead of just having four in, in Path of the Iron Theory, you have a more, like I say, you have blood, you have death, you have life, hmm. you have blades, um, I could air, also see water. Someone, um, making parallels between this and say the the night's radiant in um stormlight archive that one i did not read um i'm afraid i <laughs> i didn't read I, uh, yeah. the only things i read from sanderson are i think the i i don't know i, I read a few things but yeah I, I, that one i did not read mm -hmm. so yeah but it's on my to to read list mm -hmm. and I do think I do think it was an interesting little t little touch that you had with how the art was ha is handled within e within each of the um, each of the path entries in the in the sense that it don't that you have it look like two sides of a um, 2D fighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think there it was a cool idea to represent since each path. Uh, the techniques and all that, they each take a, a page and they are like, uh, so if you open the spread, you have in one side one path and on the other one another path. I thought it would be cool at the bottom to showcase um, the st stereotypical fighter from each path facing each other. So yeah, and the the artist, uh, Milan, he did an incredible job with all the art in the book. I'm super happy with it. It's very, very cool. It's very good stuff. Very happy to have worked with him. Yeah, and keep now keeping that keeping that in mind. Even even though this is even though this is classless, it does look it does appear from my perspective that there is there is something of a um ar a archetype system with the four um affinity types when it comes to using Wishan. Mm, yeah, I, I suppose. If, I mean, yes, uh, the the different archetypes they they favor, uh, and it's the, the interesting the interesting side of, of that is that it's randomized. Mm -hmm. So you might end, end up having an affinity towards uh, one type of techniques, which are maybe more aggressive. Other ones, which are more about uh, controlling the opponents or or more support style. But you could also end up having no affinity at all and be number one neutral one. So in that sense, yes, they do nudge you in a specific direction, but it's not it's such a big deal that they will 
I mean, if you end up with an affinity towards, like I said, a damage dealing, but you really enjoy crowd control or whatever, you are still going to be able to just pick crowd control um, techniques and, and focus in, in that. So in that sense, and the game, I try to make... Um, uh, present the idea that maybe your character has been is the same with the kin trait. Each uh, each um, each character belongs to a different clan, so you'll have a like a hereditary um, in gift, which gives you a series of of advantages. So you have those, and, and that's also completely randomized. So I like to have that kind of a this is your destiny. This is the character that you could be very good at. But you don't have to follow your destiny. You can create your own and ignore those natural gifts that are pushing you in one direction, and you can perfectly make a very good actor in in in, a, in your own direction. So, if you want to min max, you can of course just go with what you roll, but you are always free to to choose your own path. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want I didn't want to make it sound like I was implying that there's that there's some sort of Broad, cl broad class setup. Uh, when I said that, no, no, no. Of course not. It, of course not. I, I liken it to how Dark Souls is technically classless, even though some people try to argue otherwise. But that's another story. But there are there are certain builds, there are certain archetypes that are, were organically built out of the community. The whole, yeah. the whole. Um, strength build versus dex build, for instance, or the yeah. or the different mage builds are an example of this phenomena. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the that's the vibe that I got. But I would like to go into the go into the four types: caster, dominator, forger, and shaper. Um, what would the what would those four types? Largely entail. Mm. <laughs> now you catch me <laughs> in a bit of because I, 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 I can't remember all the all the details. Like I said, I I wrote this over a year ago, mm -hmm. and even though I, it's it's been revised several times and all that, there are certain aspects I I I didn't go again so deep into it because I'm always working on on new stuff. So. Um, right now, I, I really cannot remember the difference between the four different um, uh, archetypes. Um, I, I, the, the 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 main thing is that uh, you had the yeah. I think the casters were purely uh, focused on 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 um, attacks mm -hmm. on a uh, range attacks, but like uh, projecting. Uh, a beam of fire, or that's that sort of thing. More, more, more close to your stereotypical, well, caster in in a in a in a video game. Mm -hmm. And then the dominators, yeah, they they're all about changing the what affects your your opponent. So you could have um, um, there's a there's a like a path of illusion. So most of the dominator stuff are, are there. It's a lot of mental illusions or or um, status effects, conditions, all that sort of stuff, and and the other two right now I cannot remember for the life of me. I'm I'm so sorry, no. and I don't have my notes in front of me because I'm I'm not in in my usual PC, so I I cannot check it right now. No, no I'm worries. Pretty sorry. No worries. Um. I I swear I went through the whole. A PDF before this interview, and I I read most of it, but right now I'm drawing a blank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. But even even with even with that, there it, in the material that you had that you had sent me, there was the each of the paths had one tech one technique, for lack of a better term, that was that was tied to each each of those four affin each of those four affinities. Um, and I'm get I'm guessing that's how it's go that's how it's going to work in ter in terms of the uh, in terms of the others. Is it a case where you where right out of the gate you have to pick one technique from your path, or are 
are you getting all four right up from a from one of the paths you start with and have to advance further by learning techniques from other paths yeah no you start with all the once you choose a path you choose you have all those starting techniques and like i said those initial affinities the only thing that they do is give you a slight advantage when you make a check to see if the if that te technique uh, works but mm -hmm. that's it i mean it's it's not a it's not a game a deal breaker i mean it's uh just a slight advantage but nothing that will not allow you to pursue other type of, of techniques so yeah when you choose a path you have uh, those starting techniques and some of them are passive other ones are active and then the rest is just uh, up to you to try to to learn them from, from other opponents that you find you can you can even learn some specific like um, high class or legendary question from druids but you have to earn their respects for them to teach them to you or or you can defeat them and steal them from you which is, uh, steal them from them which is more difficult because they're usually at a higher spiritual level than you are yeah by the way the game doesn't have levels it has uh, spiritual stages mm -hmm. um so um, in in that way the 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 con the continent you're exploring continent of Istran mm -hmm. It's it's a little bit like old MMOs, like World of Warcraft. That I don't know if you remember that they were divided by by level zones. Like if you yep. go to this area, you should be this level. Well, it's it's the same here in <laughs> in Path of the Iron Theory. You could, of course, go to a high level area, but you're going to die almost guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So the the game has a specific uh, path that you should be following as a progression path. You start in in your wood spirit stage area, then you move to to I think it was iron the next one. So you have a, a a total of five different stages, and and on each different region you have different enemies more or less tailored to your power level. Of course, things are going to to this is still an OSR game. Nothing, not everything is perfectly scaled to you. There are dangerous enemies. You can die pretty pretty damn easily and among those more power enemies you're going to find are the druids so interesting thing is that yeah you can get those very unique techniques that you cannot find anywhere else yeah and i i can i can certainly get that uh if in, if anything the way you've described this zone based design reminds me more of a arpg like diablo than it than um yeah. War, than Warcraft, although both of them, although both of them are be, are being cut from the same kind of cloth, so I get, so yeah. Mulligan, I suppose. But mm -hmm. based on what you said, it's it sounds like this is something that would naturally fit a hex crawl design, and I think there was even a hex map in the material you sent me. Oh. Yeah, it's it's all base, it's all hex hex base exploration it has. Uh, hex generation rules, uh, uh, rules for traveling. Of course, everything is completely, su completely supported by random tables and perfectly solvable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's all hex-based stuff because I just have a lot of fun with hex-based exploration. I find it very interesting, very fun to to do. Yeah. Now, obviously, the last time I had you on, we had talked to, we had talked about um, Karen. Nathales, and I know I mispronounced it. <laughs> so, so, no, 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 perfectly but, fine. Nathales, yeah. But um, that was a that was a solo RPG that could be played in a multiplayer sense. So I'd like to flip that around in asking if, um, much like some of your other other work, could Pat could Path be played in a solo sense? Absolutely. I mean the the ideal setup is one on one, so it will be one GM and one player because it's I wrote the game with that in mind. It, I think it's a it's a good um, way of representing the me against the world, and I'm a lone warrior exploring this strange new continent, almost 
completely uninhabited, f full of weird creatures and strange characters. Um, but uh, yeah, it's the 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 book has a whole chapter dedicated to solo rules. So yes, it's very easy, and actually that's how I play it. Mm -hmm. I always play. I, I haven't played this with anyone actually. I only play it alone. Um, but you can, of course, play it with with other people. Or you can play it in a traditional party setup. But I find that it plays very well alone, and and it and one on one, it's it's how it's written to be played. So yeah, yeah, that's that certainly make that certainly makes sense. Now, even even. Even within even within that um, that partic that particular setup, like when it comes to when it, when it comes to spiritual adva advancement, because you mentioned that you mentioned that, I'm curious if it's something like say insight rank in L five R where it's a where it's an overall averaging of your um de your development al along. Your particular stats, or ha or is it an XP as currency kind of affair, like a like a World of Darkness or the like, when it comes to advancement? Yeah, actually, it's it's the second. It's more XP as current currency because the way of pushing your spiritual advancement is uh, through. Um, well, all characters have like their what they call it's called the ara. It's like it's your core, mm -hmm. your spiritual core, which you need to develop. And the way you do it is by forcing spiritual energy into it, which is experience points. Basically, you spend experience points to increase your your the size of your core until it reaches a critical point where you advance to the next uh, spiritual stage. Mm -hmm. And but yeah, you need to be um, XP it's earned through a uh, well, of course, through combat, but also through exploration, social interaction. Even having a successful check can grant you a little bit of experience. But what you do with that experience is up to you. You can either dedicate it to pushing your advancement, which will make you, of course, more powerful because each uh, spiritual stage you reach has a series of advance advantages. They can even improve your physical body, give you uh, a lot of advantages. It can make you immune to uh, poison give you a lot of health. I mean, depending, you you have a different set of bodies <laughs> that you can choose. and um, But uh, you have to balance the improvement of your spiritual stage with the learning and acquisition of new techniques. Because, of course, in order to, to <clears throat> learn a new technique, you need to have the spiritual energy necessary to incorporate it into your own path. And that's done through experience points. So you have to be uh, choosing whether you exp uh, you spend your expend your experience points on pushing your your spiritual stage up or learning new techniques. And and aside from that, you can also improve your your typical skills that you will have in in like perception, survival, all all those. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the standard array of skills. Mm -hmm. So all that is done through experience, which you choose how you spend it. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the when it comes to the resource used for um, techniques, is that is that a resource that's that's gained after that's recovered after a um, eight hour eight hour rest, like spells are, or is the recovery a bit a bit different? Oh no! Yeah, the recovery is after standard rest. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I can. And of course, the more the more of that resource you have, the more techniques you can use. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's all it's all choosing how uh, you can concentrate on having just a couple of of uh, techniques. But of course, you can also improve those techniques. You can spend experience points to make them more powerful. So you could have maybe just four and make them very powerful. Increase your your mana pool if you want to call it mm -hmm. a lot so you increase your spiritual stage and you have a lot of uh, points to spend and to use those techniques so or on the other side you can just have a lot of techniques and be prepared for a more varied array of situations maybe less powerful but you will have a, a an answer to different problems 
so it's up to to each player how to deal with it yeah i can i can certainly get that now with that in mind what would you be shooting for as far as the total page count the book is like i said it's been finished for for quite a while now and 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 it's 133 pages i think it was 33 37 something like that so yeah, the format is half letter. And so it's a standard small smallish book, and yeah, it's completely done. So the second the Kickstarter is, is done, it, we, we found it already. Um, Alan Barb, which is the person behind Gallant Night Games, which are the ones releasing the game, mm -hmm. he will send the the book to print almost right away. So it's going to be a quite short wait everything is done basically all right i i can get that and as far as a release as far as a release window it's it sounds like it's going to be shortly after the kickstarter um ends so prob so probably by the end of the month the P I, I, that i i can't really At comment because it's not up version. to me but but yeah i, I imagine the PDF should uh, go to backers relatively soon. Mm -hmm. I, we will probably make a last pass because even though it's been edited to hell a million times, you always find new things and, and little things to tweak. So yeah, maybe give us a month or two to make a last decent pass. But I imagine that it will be distributed pretty, pretty soon. Yeah, because everything is finished. Mm -hmm. no, and I will look forward to that. But with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens around here. Well, thank you so much for, for having me. It's always very interesting to talk to you. Yep. And of, co of course, anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And, of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody!